Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, uh, particularly The Amazing World of Radio at amazing.greatdetectives.net. Our baseball series continues with a new episode added every uh, Wednesday. Just check that out at amazing.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The original air date is June 15th of 1950, and the title is The Aerocraft Matter. For your enjoyment, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum presents from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Good evening. This is Mr. Snell, the secretary. Oh, sure. Hi. I was unable to reach Mr. Snell before he left for the West Coast. But he asked me to outline the case to you and hoped you'd follow him out there. It's quite serious. Oh? What is it? Our company has been carrying the policies on a line of pleasure boats for a West Coast sales agency, the Aerocraft Cruisers. Within the past two weeks, three of them have sunk with no survivors. Bad risks. Yes. There's a liability clause. Next of kin in each case is bringing suit for nearly a million dollars. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien, in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Grand East Life and Liability Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during assignment to Millard Snell of your legal department on the investigation of the Arrowcraft matter. Expense account item one, $275 air travel Hartford to Los Angeles and rented car travel from Los Angeles to Newport Beach and... The heart of the trouble. Snell? Millard Snell? Who is it? It's Dollar. Dollar? Hurry up. Get aboard. Now watch it. She's wet tonight. Hey, give me your arm. Come on. Thanks. Didn't think you were going to make it. You talked to your secretary? Yes, but that was yesterday from Chicago. Well, I didn't know where you were until I called her from the Los Angeles airport a couple of hours ago. Then when I got here, your hotel told me you just left to charter a boat. What's up? Myers, how long will it be? Uh, Robert should be here any minute, Mr. Snell. Couldn't leave without him. All right, if you can hurry him up anyway, do it. Come on in the cabin, Dollar. Out of this foul night air. This fog. I thought it was bad sometimes in Hartford. Another cruise has been reported, Dollar. An Arrowcraft? Yes. Reported by a private plane between here and Catalina Island. That's 30 miles offshore. The Coast Guard been notified? Yes, but candidly, I hope we see it before they do. Find out what we insured. If we can find it in this fog. Find it? You mean this one is still afloat? Before dark, yes. Barely afloat. Robert, hurry, get aboard. Ah, there he is. The navigator we've been waiting for. I hope he's sober. Tell me, what have you learned so far? What makes them sink? I don't know. The sales agent, Fred Crocker, you'll meet him, swears by aircraft. Says they're one of the best hulls afloat. Ah, but the fact remains they've been sinking. Uh Uh-huh, and a tragic fact, too. The loss of life so far has been horrible. Three 28-foot boats, 11 fatalities. 
No trace of the cruisers, even. But a life ring or two. Must have been deep water, then. What about bodies? Seven have been recovered and four still missing. Ah, we're getting started. It was 10 p.m. when we left the quiet resort village. And it was dawn when we saw in the fog what we had been unable to find during a whole night of searching. The arrow craft, without sign of life, was almost entirely awash, bowed down in the channel swell. That's close enough, Myers. Right. We don't want to nudge her. She's allowed to roll over. Well, here we are, but there's nothing we can do about her. How she stays up is beyond me. Any chance of towing it in? Not in that shape. Give her any weight. She'll just take more water and go down. Can you put me aboard? If you want to go, I can put you there, but I don't know what your weight is going to do. She's ready to roll. What do you think, Roberts? Oh, we'll put him over the stern. That shouldn't upset her. We'd better get some of those clothes off, Della, while we swing around. All right. You think it's worth it? You're going aboard? Worth it? I'm not going for a night like that without having a look at it. Gives me the creeps. The thing a wash like that. Looks dead. Yeah. Too dead. Why isn't there anyone aboard? Why isn't somebody hanging onto the side? Okay, Dollar. We'll move into it now. I'm ready. To get back there on the transom. That's it. Right there. I'll swing you right into it. Right. There you are. Go ahead. Okay. They can get off the gunnel. And stay amidships. Don't get to either side. She'll roll. I'm all right. Anything there? Yeah. Yeah, there's something here. There's a girl in the cabin. Her body floated face down in the flooded cabin, held in there by the narrowness of the passageway. After an unpleasant and picklish 15 minutes... She was lifted aboard the other boat by three suddenly silent men. There was little else I could do on the derelict but memorize the name and address on the certificate of ownership. So I left it and followed the girl. I didn't bargain for this, Dollar. It doesn't bother me to read about 11 of them, but... But this girl... Why, she can't be over 18. Yeah, I noticed no, if it was a guy, it wouldn't hit so hard. A kid like this. Beautiful. Myers. Yes, sir? Have you radioed in about this? I waited to find out whether you want to stand by the boat or not. No. We'll start right back. Get word to the police. Ask them to meet us. I think it's a case for them. The boat's registered to a Chester McNeil, Newport Beach address. McNeil, Newport Beach address. McNeil, yes, all right. You want to get us started, Roberts? Right. What'd you find, Dollar? Come here, look at this. See? Behind her ear. You see the bruise? Yeah. yeah. I noticed it when I was getting her out of the cabin. She'd been slugged? She could have been. There's long black hair. You see here? The water's ruined most of it, but there's still part of a braid. It could have been a hard blow, one that might have killed a man, but her braid might have softened it. I'm looking for an answer to why she was on that boat, alone and dead. <laughs> It was an answer I never did actually find and prove because in the final analysis, the death of this beautiful, dark-haired girl was no more important than any of the rest of them. She was taken to the county morgue and after making my formal statement to the police and giving them my informal theories, I followed her there. I take it that the deceased is not a personal friend of yours. That's right, Dr. Sane. I'm an insurance investigator. I'm in Southern California because a number of people have died in the sinkings of some insured pleasure boats. Oh, yes, the aircraft? Yes. And the death of this girl has become important to me. What's her name? Uh, Caruso, Antonia Caruso. She was identified by her mother. Antonia. Are you planning an autopsy? Why do you ask? I wonder if you noticed a bruise behind her right ear. Yes, I reported it. You're an observant fellow. Dr. Sane, you must have examined some of the other bodies from these sinkings. 
Were there any indications of violence on them? If there were, I was unable to discover them. The period of immersion in other cases, you must understand, was much longer than in the Caruso case. Water makes it difficult. Why do you ask? On well, the rest of the sinkings, the boats themselves have been blamed. But after today, it seems to me there's a possibility that something else has caused them, at least this one. The contusions? Yes. There were two other people on that boat, the owner, Chester McNeil, and his father. But the girl's body was the only one aboard. Why? Uh, I didn't know the particulars. I think the girl wore braids, Doctor. If she did, could she have survived a blow that would have killed the two men? Protection? Well, location of the wound would bear you out behind the ear. Could she have been knocked unconscious, been thrown overboard, and then recovered enough to get back on? Could this have happened to the girl? Are you suggesting homicide, Mr. Dollar? I'm not sure. Then I'm not sure why perfectly good boats start sinking without survivors, either. They have to make autopsy examination to determine the degree of concussion. Well, that's why I asked. Are you going to perform one? In the state of California, Mr. Dollar, except in cases of unquestionable criminal acts, autopsy is allowed upon only permission of the next of kin. Now, this contusion, well, it could have been sustained so many ways. Yes, I know, I know. Matter of fact, arrangements have already been made to move the body into a private establishment. Oh. Um, could you give me her mother's address? Why, uh, y yes, I suppose so. But I'd be doing no more than saving you a search of the phone book. What is it you want? Mrs. Caruso, I'm the man that found your daughter. Oh, then why have you come here? You shouldn't know my grief. I do, Mrs. Caruso, but I'd like to talk with you if I could. Well, what is it there to say? I don't want to see you. There is no room for sympathy. I didn't know anything about your daughter, but I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to hear about her. Why do you do this? Because... Because I don't think her death was accidental. Oh, go away. Why do you say this? My girl, she never did a no wrong. I didn't mean that, Mrs. Caruso. Please, may I come in? All right. It's in my house. I'm sorry. It's not cared for. There have been so many things today. Well, I won't stay long. She was a good girl. She was going to marry Chester. His father was with them. She was going to marry Chester. Oh, we hoped it so much, Antonia and me, that it would be a good marriage. Mrs. Caruso... We always dreamed. We were good people, only poor. We give everything so Antonia will be better. She was so beautiful. She was going to marry Chester. I'm sorry she to bother you at a time like this, I... Now... She's gone. I saw her. I saw her too. And I want to learn why she's gone. Now, Mrs. Caruso, is there any reason that you can think of why there should have been trouble on this trip in the McNeil boat? Oh, no. They go many times. They love the boat. They go many times. Always with his father to take care of them. Yeah, he loved her, too. My daughter, he called her. She was going to marry his Chester. Be so happy. Please, Mrs. Cole. Oh, my Antonia. Antonia. Please, I'll go. You know my grief. Leave my house. Leave my house. I left her house and drove back to Millard Snell's hotel. It was 7 p.m., and I hoped we could get to Crocker, the West Coast agent for Arrowcraft, before the night was out. But I found Snell white-faced when I opened the door and too anxious to show me the front page of the evening paper. I didn't know where to find you, Dollar. For what? And you haven't heard. Fred Crocker, the Arrowcraft agent. He was killed this afternoon. Oh. It says traffic, hit-and-run victim. 
But I don't believe it. Look at this. Violence in another form preceded the tragedy, the story said. Crocker's sales office was entered earlier today in a bold daylight strike. The interior was wrecked, but whether or not the entry was for purposes of theft has not been ascertained. The writer didn't make any definite statements. But reading between the lines, you knew that he was exploring the possibility that revenge was at the bottom of both the violence and the tragedy. That those who had lost family or friends in the Arrowcraft sinkings had wrecked Crocker's office and then killed him. But remembering the bruise behind the Caruso girl's ear, I didn't believe that either. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. A lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. And now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Snell and I drove out to what had been Crocker's sales office. A sheriff's deputy met us outside and took us in. Give you some light if... Uh... Oh, there's a switch. Well, not as bad as it could be. At least the drawers aren't dumped. These are from a file cabinet. We'll start here. What are you looking for? Crocker's sales records. Sales records? The names and addresses of all the people who bought arrow crafts from him. I don't think we'll find it. I don't get you. We've got a theory. That those boats didn't just sink, that they were boarded, that the people who've been lost were slugged before they were drowned, and that the boats were scuttled. What do you think of it? Why would anybody set out to wreck aircraft? Well, that I don't know. Probably because they're linked to something important. Maybe something or somebody is on an aircraft and somebody else doesn't know which one. Here's the sales folder, Dollar. It's empty, all right. Sure it is. That gives them the location of every aircraft between here and San Diego. Sheriff, nobody has said where Crocker was when this place was entered. They don't know yet. You got a theory? Yeah, that he was here. Yeah, that after the list of names and addresses was taken, he was dragged out of here and killed with a car for the same reason the others have been killed. Because alive, they might have been identifying witnesses. Well, they say everybody's got a right to his own opinion, but that's too crazy for me. Well, I don't blame you. It's too crazy for anybody. Maybe so crazy it'll never be cleared up. Expense account item two, $112 cost of entertainment that same night for as many members of the press as I could get hold of. They listened to my theory, agreed that it was unbelievable, but worth printing on the grounds of sensationalism. The story made the morning editions, most of the papers slanting it towards warning the Arrowcraft owners listed in Crocker's stolen records. But it didn't look so unbelievable because it had a companion piece. A night watchman at one of the yacht clubs lay near death from gunshot wounds after apprehending a prowler aboard an arrow craft. The prowler was being held at the county jail. Who is this guy, Sergeant? Jerry LaBarbe is the name he uses. We put a search on him last night. He's one of those things you call a known hoodlum because nobody's been able to pin much on him. Known to the police in Las Vegas, L.A., and San Diego, to name a few. Here he is. I hope you had better luck with him than we did. If you meant that, you'd leave me alone with him for the rest of the day. Sorry. Off the bunk, LaBarber. You got a visitor. On your feet. Stand up. Okay, hero. You got me up. What's the matter with you? What's missing, LaBarber? What? What's lost? What were you looking for on the arrow craft? Come on, who are you working for? I'm out of work. Why don't you save your breath? How many of the other killings were you mixed up in? What are the killings? I get into a scrape with an eager night watchman, and now you talk about pinning other killings on me. What is this? Who are you working for? I'm out of work. You could do yourself some good, you know. I'm not complaining, am I? 
You were off to a pretty good start. Even if that watchman lives, you're going to be tried for assault with intent to kill. That's a long rap. You might make it shorter by using your head. <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're a sucker, LaBarber. But this is a promise. I'm going to see you charged for Crocker's murder. Who's Crocker? And I'm going into the business of searching Arrowcrafts myself. Don't be stupid. Why not put the blame where it belongs? Blame for what? Okay, Sergeant, I've had enough. So have I. I wonder how long it takes to get that way. For what? I could buy and sell you, you cheap tin star. Well, what do you think? He's covering for somebody, isn't he? Hank, you're right. You shouldn't have tipped your hand so much about searching the boat. Word's going to get out. Out of a jail cell? He called for a lawyer, one of the hot men from L.A. We can refuse him visitors, but not a private session with a criminal who happens to be his lawyer. Oh, I'd like to hear that one. You should. It's going to put a bigger bullseye on your back than that newspaper story did. There was no trouble that day and no progress. We had time to contact two Arrowcraft owners that afternoon and went aboard their boats. Nothing came of it but a feeling of frustration because we didn't know what we were looking for, how large or small it was, whether to empty fire extinguishers or break and open batteries. That night the news broke that the night watchman had died of his wounds. Snell and I made an attempt at eating dinner and took a bottle of cognac to my room to see what it could do. The phone call came at 9.30. Hello? Hello? Well, this is Dalla speaking. Who's this? I'm in a phone booth, so don't bother trying to trace this call. It's about the boat trouble. All right. What about it? Not over the phone. You have to come up here. Where do I meet you? I've got to be careful. You'll know why when I talk to you. You have to come alone. What else? There's a place called Leeds Bar. It's on Long Beach Boulevard, three blocks up from the beach. You'll see the sign. I'll find it. You can make it in an hour. But you've got to be alone. I will be. All right. Quarter of eleven. What was that? Some girl says she wants to talk about the arrow craft. Wants me to meet her in Long Beach. Don't be ridiculous. You're not going. Somebody has to do something. Nothing as foolhardy as this. You've been expecting them to make a move. Here it is. You don't for a minute think she's telling the truth. I won't find out sitting here swilling brandy with you. I wasted ten minutes in Newport circling through alleys and side streets to shake any tail that might have been put on me. And then I headed up the coast highway. At exactly 10.45, I was ordering a drink in Leeds Bar. It arrived simultaneously with a metallic nudge in the ribs from a man who had taken the stool on my right. Drink it, Dollar. We've got to go. I was supposed to get a message from a girl. You've had it. Come on, drink up. All right. Now leave. I'll meet you outside the door. Do I get to talk with this girl? She's outside. Okay. This way. Here's a car. No, you, you get in the front with her. I'll get him back. Where to now? Just a little way. You weren't followed? I made it a point not to be. Huh? You wanted to talk. Yeah, I do. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I don't think I care anymore. It's been like I killed all those people who've died. Take it easy, honey. You mean their deaths are your fault? So it have, yeah. I mean, I could have stopped it, but I was afraid to because one of his men would have killed me. And I thought he'd stop me for this. He? Who do you mean? Hey, <laughs> watch what you're going. You better stop, when. This is as good a place as any. Yeah. I, I didn't go to the police because I have a record. And he's so powerful, he... He could have made it look like blackmail and it wouldn't have gone any farther. Who is so powerful? George Masterson. George Masterson? Who's he? Oh, he seems like a businessman. He owns a line of furniture stores. I've known him for three years. It was one of those things where oh, every once in a while I'd learn something about him. Until I finally understood what he really was. And he knew I did. 
What kind of payment do you expect for what you're telling me? Dollar. I hadn't thought of money. I swear I hadn't. All right. Go ahead. Matheson's as far outside the law as you can get. Narcotics, jewels and furs, aliens, Mexican gold, anything. He runs the West Coast for a combination that has headquarters in Italy. Who knows this? I do. And I wrote it all down. Ways to prove it. Like the names he uses for all his bank accounts to evade income tax. All of it. That's what he's been looking for on those boats. Well, then he was afraid... Writing it down was the only way I could think of to protect myself. He was afraid of me. Because I knew so much about him. He was going to have me killed. We were in Mexico when I told him, Ensenada. When he didn't believe me, I showed him a copy. I told him I'd hidden the original on a boat I'd visited. And that if he killed me, I had a way of letting the police know which one... Which one is it? I was lying to him. I didn't put it on a boat. I was lying. Arrowcraft was only a name I remembered. When he asked me, I said Arrowcraft. You mean there's nothing on those boats and 16 people have died? I know. I, I know I was wrong. I should have. But when you're scared, you only think of yourself. Don't go in, honey. You'll be all right. This paper you say you wrote, where is it? I have it here. I want you to take it. Now, get out, brother. I want to take her home. I didn't fully believe her until I had finished reading her denunciation of George Masterson after they'd left me. But by the end of it, I knew that in my hands was the hottest document in California. I knew that hundreds of rotten lives could be crumbled and millions of dollars in criminal traffic could be stopped. And it did away with the possibility of any suit against Arrowcraft or your company. But it wasn't enough. I should have gone to the authorities with it then. Instead, I took a room for the night and mailed it to the FBI in the morning. Then I went after Masterson. I found him in a plush office in one of his furniture stores. Here. Just a moment, sir. You can't go in there. Mr. Masterson... What's the meaning of this? You're announced before you get in here. Not this morning, Masterson. I'm sorry, sir. Get somebody to throw this man out. What's the matter with you? Who are you? Johnny Dollar, working on the Arrowcraft sinkings. Gwen Thomas. I've read her statement. I don't know what you're talking about. About 16 deaths. The FBI can have you for the rest. But I want you for those 16 deaths. Get away from me. Get away from you. <laughs> Stay away from me. Get up. Oh, listen to me. Come on. Get up. As far as I was concerned, that was it. The girl was placed under protective custody by the FBI and the district attorney, who had worked out 75 counts on Masterson's indictment before I left. It's too bad that all of the next of kin of the 16 dead can't sit in the jury box. Expense account item three, same as item one. Expense account total, $940.20. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, Treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leif Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. 
Featured in tonight's cast were Gene Bates, Howard McNear, Clayton Post, Harry Bartell, Hi Aberback, John McIntyre, and Jeanette Nolan. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to join us next week at this same time when from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, this really does capture the degree to which Edmund O'Brien's take on uh, Johnny Dollar, when it's not filtered through, you know, some other requirements, or he's not reenacting someone else's scripts, really do uh, lean towards the uh, very noirish uh, side of drama. And can be probably the more uh, downbeat approach, particularly the horrific nature of the crimes and the way the solution turned out. And uh, Edmund O'Brien's uh, dollar is probably the version that's most likely to just wail on someone. Now, there was one episode where Bob Bailey's Johnny Dollar did that, and it seemed a little bit more out of place. Uh, you know, it's a little less consistent with the character, uh, and also the crime was not severe. Here, you really, with the way that he acts, you can kind of understand why he's out there dispensing this bit of rough justice. Uh, this episode also featured Howard McNear in an interesting role, uh, perhaps interesting because uh, it's typically less interesting than uh, you usually get from uh, McNear. Because the thing that people will always remember about McNear you know, on radio is just the uh, eccentric, weird, oddball characters he played on so many series like uh, Let George Do It and, of course, the Bob Bailey, Johnny Dollar, you know, all of those uh, sort of characters. Here he plays a much more straightforward character, and so it's intriguing to see that sort of non-quirky character played by Howard McNear. Well, we turn now to listener comments and feedback. We have a comment on Twitter from Pete who writes, uh, uh, Thank you for providing a little piece of sanity in these difficult times. As a key worker here in the UK, I'm listening to your back catalog as I travel to and from work. Uh, keep up the good work, and all the best to you, your wife, and all the listeners. Well, thanks so much, Pete. And thank you to all of the key workers, essential workers, whoever your country or state uh, defines it, who are out there uh, working hard. I know we have uh, quite a few truckers who have emailed in at one time or another, but uh, really do appreciate the effort, and all that you're doing to keep things going in these difficult times. And then we have a comment on YouTube from M. Watts Riley. Uh, writes, Adam, you have no idea how priceless you've been to me these four weeks. Uh, in shutdown in Elgin, Illinois, I love your dedication and, frankly, uh, your accent. It's soothing. Well, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate uh, your comment. And uh, I want to go ahead and also go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters since May of last year. Again, thank you so much for your support. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet next Friday, another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Uh, in the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become uh, one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.